In this video, I want to talk about diffuse cerebral disorders. And these are disorders that don't just affect one little part of the brain, but affect kind of large areas of the brain diffusely, particularly this outermost layer of the brain, the cerebral cortex. Diffuse dysfunction of the cerebrum, and particularly the cerebral cortex, may cause abnormalities of the higher nervous system functions, with or without also involving the lower neural functions. For example, a common syndrome of diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction called delirium. Delirium, also called encephalopathy, which basically just means brain dysfunction, usually involves confusion with abnormal arousal, attention, orientation, or other higher neural functions, while often sparing the basic motor, sensory, and autonomic functions. Delirium is usually a reversible syndrome, where there is diffuse dysfunction of the cerebral cortical neurons, which then subsequently recover when the cause is resolved. Dementia, also called neurocognitive disorder, is another common group of syndromes that involve diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction. But with these disorders, there's long-term and usually progressive cognitive loss from diffuse loss of cerebral cortical neurons as opposed to the temporary dysfunction that's reversible with delirium. Many different types of pathology can cause diffuse cerebral syndromes. So these are some of the categories of pathology that can cause diffuse cerebral dysfunction. Most of these primarily affect cognition, but some may also affect emotional functions or consciousness, the other higher neural functions. Several genetic disorders may cause diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction, such as one called Huntington's disease, which often causes dementia from diffuse loss of cerebral cortical neurons. This also occurs with the idiopathic disorder Alzheimer's disease, which is the most common cause of dementia. Several vascular abnormalities often cause a brief drop in the blood pressure in the whole body, but the brain needs a constant supply of blood flow, so this can cause a syndrome of diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction called presyncope, which is feeling faint, or called syncope if there's actually loss of consciousness, which is called fainting. Seizures may involve most of the cerebral cortex at onset, which are called generalized seizures, or there may be seizures that start focally in one area, like one lobe of the brain, but then secondarily generalized to involve most of the cerebral cortex. Either of these types of seizures causes diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction. The mechanical disorder head trauma may cause a brief episode of diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction called concussion, or with more severe injury to the head, there may be long-term widespread diffuse traumatic brain injury. Many metabolic disorders, oops, I forgot metabolic. There we go, metabolic. Many, many metabolic disorders, such as low blood sugar, are common causes of delirium. Certain infectious microorganisms may invade the brain tissue, causing diffuse cerebral inflammation, which is called encephalitis. Or they may invade the cerebral spinal fluid and inflame the meninges around the brain, which is called meningitis. The nutritional disorder, vitamin B12 deficiency, may cause dementia. And then many toxins may affect the brain diffusely, such as sedating medications that commonly cause delirium. Most types of mental illness or psychiatric disorders are probably from idiopathic diffuse cerebral dysfunction as well.